I'm here with other women from black and diverse community in Oxford uh, to speak about their maternity experience in Oxford. I've worked in the community for over a year and I've heard a lot of stories from women and I thought this would be a good thing uh, for women in my community to be able to share what they've been through while giving birth. So it's mainly what you've been through, what you'd like to change, if there's any uh, need for change. However you want to share it, it's up to you. Um, so who would like to share first? The way I was treated, I was treated very well. The doctor picked it up very fast. They noticed that I had an issue. They put me directly to a specialist. But one of the, lady, one of the ladies, the receptionist or one of the nurses noticed that I'm always coming alone. And she told me, you need, you can talk, you can say whatever is up bothering you. And she was very kind. And after the session, they would keep me on the side and calm me down and encourage me. And I never felt like I was treated like a black person all through my experience from the start to the end. With my last child, a very, very good experience. I have a lovely, such a kind uh, midwife I saw in my life. She tried to be with me all the time because she saw me, I'm a bit down and I'm crying a lot. And because of my situation, I have kidney stone this pregnancy, during my pregnancy, and they tried to bring me a midwife, she came from Banbury just to be with me that night. When I came to this country, I don't have any experience, no family with me, no anybody. Just the midwife, she keeps support me and push me. I never ever forget uh, this uh, midwife, uh, it's really a good midwife. Like, like my family, I, I remember her, all my pregnancy. My three kids. I would say I've never, I, I have a very good experience, even with my midwives and everything. Because she's like, oh, tell me, is there anything you want to tell me? She's, she was quite ready to listen to me with anything I want to say. And I was like, explain to her, I'm feeling too stressed with this pregnancy. I have to go to work too and the kids and everything. And she was like, oh, do you think your mom can come down? I said, yes. Yeah. I said, okay. Is there any help you think as a midwife I need to do for you? For your mom to come, I said, as far as I know, there is nothing, it's all for me to do, but I might need some letter to back it up and everything. Immediate effect, she typed the letter and she gave it to me. Oh, wow. And everything, and before you know it, my mom was here and she was like, that's I called her when I went for my next appointment, I was like, oh, thank you very much, mom. And she was so happy and glad of, thank you, at least I can do this for you, yeah. and now you are relieved and happy, there's someone to help, and why you have the little baby. With the first one, when I went to the hospital, when I was having the contraction, I was told to go back home. They insisted I should go back home. I said, no, I'm not going back home. Once they check you and they say, oh, yeah, just two centimeters away that you should go back home. And, and I said, no, because my fear is, what if on my way back home, then the baby started coming out? That was just my fear. You will need to go and sit down somewhere. There is no bed yet. The moment I stood up from the bed, the water broke. Immediately, they now found a bed. But you were telling me just a minute ago there was no, no bed. bed. I believe like sometimes aftercare is not as good. Yeah. I do believe that. I don't think it's... Mm, I don't know if it, I should say colour. But because of our culture, and how we have been brought up, we are seemed extra strong. We're durable, and you shouldn't always assume no. because I may be young, but my body is not like yours. You see, it's not about the age because everybody is different, and they need to just get the care they need. She went to the hospital and they said, you are okay, uh, there is some water around the baby and you will be okay, just go home. She said, I went home. When I was in toilet, using the toilet, the baby is coming out. Like, she had her baby in the toilet. Yeah, she had the baby in the toilet. And she's very scared, they called the ambulance. Her daughter, seven years old, she tried to translate for, for her mom. And they, they very, they very like, uh, how many weeks your mom pregnant? 
Imagine seven years yeah. old. She knows her mom had a baby. They said, baby is out. And when they come, like they, they said, well done, you had your baby two hours. She's on the floor waiting. They came, but they didn't do anything for her. Just they put the blanket on the baby and they, they said, you, are, you did a very good job. And yeah. that's it. <laughs> She's very scared and her, her children cry and she needs help. She needs somebody to help her. This is the most important thing, the language. If anybody call you, they can't speak English. Straight away call translator. interpreter yes. and translator. She needs interpreter. She can't talk English and she's in pain. The doctor, I had a doctor who I think was very rude because when my son was born, he had blue eyes. And it was very light because because of um, my family background. That's where you get it from. And he he looked at me and he said to me, "Do you know this is going to be the color of your baby?" What? Yeah. Okay. That's what he said to me. And I said to him, "I said I'm a black woman. I'm from Jamaica. You don't need to tell me that." They just sat there, start telling me I should go home. I say, uh, excuse me, go home. I'm telling you I'm not okay. And you're saying I should go home. Um, I think he's a nurse or a midwife was passing by. So she now came close to me. She said, this lady is having contraction, you know? That was when they now stood up, even to ask me for my name. They didn't even ask for my name. First three months, they, they were very kind with me because I had four miscarriages before. Every two, two weeks, they did a scan for me the first three months. After three months, nobody called me, nobody asked about me until 20 weeks. And uh, they did scan, and then that's it, until nine months. And they don't ask any blood test, any urine uh, test, anything, that, which is it's not normal for me because I had two boys in my country and the treatment was, it's not like this. Uh, I went in the morning, nine in the morning, to the hospital and they said, you are not ready and everything is, you will not have a baby today. I said, listen, I can feel the head between my legs. You have to check me. She didn't check me. I went home, I take a bath, and the head, the head is nearly calm. There is something, there is a problem. Do scan, I told them, I am die now. Do any scan for me. They said, no time. And one of midwife, after three hours, she come, she put her hand and she tried to take the, this thing oh. out. The baby is coming without pushing. And then baby is blue, hair, I, I said, what happened? She said, all this around her neck, and we don't know. I said, yeah, because it's 20 weeks scan, and then nine months, no scan. After one hour, two other ladies came in pregnant, but I, my pregnancy was much bigger. They took the first one in, attended to her. They took the second one in, attended to her. I said, please, why are you people doing this and making it obvious? You know, not until they did the third one, I just stood up. I said to them, so it's better I leave. I was angry. And to be honest, I didn't know where to call to report. I've been taking it. So I left. I didn't have any last scan. After they broke the water, it was not who is a practice midwife. She don't know nothing. She just started practicing. So she told me, now since they broke the water, can you start walking around? Okay, I follow what she said. I started walking around with the water broke because since I was walking, the floor was slipped. I fell in the floor, but my leg was like this, gone like that. This went in the floor. I told him, okay, that's it. Maybe the baby, if I was falling in my tummy, maybe a cesarean or the baby will die. But why that happened? Because the other ones, you always have like one or two midwives there. I never feel like I need family, to, to be honest, because I always get the cares I need. But with this baby, it was horrible. The nurse in the hospital, they uh, come to me, they told me, uh, you need to do stitches. Uh, some uh, student, we need uh, to, to practice. And they take long time, they uh, uh, do wrong, and they keep open and do it. Oh my goodness. Uh, I wish they teach you from like a dolly or something, not like a really live person. And uh, uh, this is really horrible. 
there anything you think can be better than your experience? I mean, the care and support that you have? Um, for me, I think there is nothing more to better. It's just like as they did, they should always um, allow people to talk and ready to listen to them. Yes. There's a lot of women that have um, C-section on their own when they go home. During that four weeks that you're home, not supposed to do anything, but you still have to cook, you still have to do all of this by yourself. I think they could do a little bit more where that bit is concerned, like get somebody to come in and support those moms that is on their own, especially the ones that's got young children at home. I hope, I hope everything is changed now, more scan, more care. So I've never had, for my three children, I've never had any good experience. And to be honest, they are making me feel I'm black. That's why they're treating me that way. It's really obvious. So a lot has to change. If, so sometimes I don't feel like going to the hospital but because it's of no use. You will go there, they, 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 they will treat you, you know, differently. You don't know who to report to. You don't know. You just swallow it. You will, will take in a lot, a lot, a lot. In fact, it's too painful for me. It's too painful. When I came here, the language, it's really hard to talk with other uh, people. Uh, when I go uh, with the midwife, uh, how I explain to her, because my husband, he's work, and me alone, I use my <laughs> finger. Uh, I, I wish uh, somebody to support Interpret. me, uh, to, yeah, to help me with her. Making people aware of their rights, mm -hmm. especially when they go to the hospital, if you know your rights and you know what they need to, uh, to do for you, you'll be able to break all these barriers. So sometimes they have to improve the staff in, in the reception in GP because they, sometimes they root to people and sometimes you are down already. When you talk to them and they try to not speak nicely to you, you feel you need to cry. In my job, we have to have a good heart and be kind to everyone, to anyone. It doesn't matter their religion, their culture, their color. Uh, it's yeah. A human. Yeah, at the end of the day, yeah, we treat each other as a human, not about anything else. This research is about change. This research is about feedback. We're going to sit everyone down, basically, and let them see and hear this woman. Because when, they, when these women experience what they experienced, they didn't have the chance to share what they've gone through. So this is an opportunity for these organizations to be able to learn and use the data that we have and, and feedback that we have to make change in our community.